G'day, welcome back to the Drone News. No, not those Drone News, this Drone News, where I sit here and I ramble on pointlessly about things that have happened in the drone industry and the hobby of flying radio controlled model aircraft and drones. So sit down, grab a coffee, maybe a Valium, I don't know, you probably need something by the time I finish this. Anyway, I've got a few topics to talk about. I've squeezed them out of the news feeds. The first one is balloons. Everybody loves balloons. What would a party be without a balloon? Ooh, uh, but <laughs> some balloons are not so good. Now, remember last year, I think it was, the Chinese floated a balloon right across the continental USA, sucking up all the, the intelligence they could as it traveled across. And then once Joe Biden woke up and said, oh, balloon, um, they shot it down. Too late. Already, it had already got all the information it wanted to. That was kind of rather belated, wasn't it? Um, and now another balloon was spotted floating across the continental USA, but this one apparently was not a threat. They, I don't know, they must have sent the aircraft up and had a bit of a look-see. It was smaller, and it, the payload was just a, sort of like a box, which was two foot by two foot by two foot. From the reports I read, some, the reports differed. It was kind of nobody seemed to know, so they make stuff up. That's how the media works today. They just make stuff up, so I'm just working third-hand on reports that I received. It was just a, a box underneath this balloon, which was about a 20 or 30 foot diameter envelope. So there must have been something fairly substantial in that box or they wouldn't have needed such a big balloon to hold it up. But apparently we were told by the media and by authorities, don't worry, this is not a threat to aviation. We're not going to do anything about it. It's not a threat to aviation or security, so good as gold. And it left me wondering a little bit because if a box that is two foot by two foot by two foot, which is two for eight cubic feet in volume and contains goodness knows what, but it's probably heavy, if that floating around at 30,000 feet isn't a threat to aviation, how can they tell us that a 250 gram foam model of a Piper Cub being flown in a schoolyard is a threat to aviation? <laughs> it just makes no sense. Up at 30,000 feet, you can have airliners, right? Now these are tubes filled with little squishy things called people. And they fly really fast up there, you know, five, 600 miles an hour up at those altitudes. So if you're traveling in a little, in a little metal tube at five or 600 miles an hour and you hit an eight cubic foot hit a bit of something at those speeds, I don't think the outcome would be at all favorable. Compare that to flying around at 400 feet, where you're traveling at maybe 120 miles an hour, and hitting a 250 gram piece of plastic. Which do you think poses the bigger threat? Yet, apparently, this balloon with its mysterious payload was no threat to aviation. But your foam model of a Piper Cub is, must be restricted, regulated, controlled, registered, for all those, I don't know. <laughs> they treat us like idiots. They really do. They expect us to believe the crap they spill out. Anyway, and another balloon. This was an interesting one too. In Rio de Janeiro Airport, they used a fire hose to squirt down a balloon. It was just looked like it was a fairly small balloon. It may have been a weather balloon. I don't know. But it was just drifting across the runway. So they got out the fire tenders, got the hose out, squirted it, fell on the ground. Great solution to what could have otherwise been a complicated problem. Why don't they use fire hoses to bring down these apparent or alleged drones at airports? Why don't they do that? It seems so simple. There's no risk of anyone getting hurt. And it would be pretty effective. If someone hit your drone with a fire hose, it's not going to survive. It's going to fall on the ground. It's going to break. So why don't they do that? I mean, counter drone, perhaps the new counter drone technology is a hose. So it makes sense to me. Now, drone delivery. You know, I'll drive, that's one, it's the big thing, apparently, or it was the big thing. You know, so many people are going to lose their shirts on this, but so many rich people and investment companies have thrown money into drone delivery because it's going to be big. It's going to earn them a fortune because they've been fed a pack of hype. And it's very, very rewarding to see that one of the very first drone delivery companies, the company that was operating here in New Zealand, just 100 and something K down the road, delivering Domino's pizzas. Um, Flirty is their name, a drone delivery company called Flirty. They've gone, or well now they're called Skydrop, I think. I make notes because I'm old and forget. It's Skydrop. They rebranded to Skydrop, you know, people with cool kids. Um, they've gone tits up. They've gone belly up. They've run out of money. Investors have said, no, nah, not making any money. We don't, we don't, put, we don't, don't want to put any more money into this thing. So they've wound it up. It's the end of it. Gone. And I think this is going to be the first of many failures in the drone delivery industry. Now, yeah, Amazon's still going to be there. Google's going to be there because they got more money than God. But the other companies that have been dabbling in this, I think we're going to see a lot of them folding up because there's just no money in it. Even if there was regulatory reforms that allowed them to do this stuff, there's no money in it. Now, I was interviewed by a school student from the USA this week. We did a Skype call. He had a lot of questions about drone deliveries, doing a project for his school. And I did some research and I discovered that even though there are only a handful of companies actually engaging in drone delivery trials at the moment, there have been an awful lot of crashes and some of them could have been very serious. So I don't see how any drone company will be a drone delivery company will be able to survive 
with the risks associated with it. Even if you can work it out so that you can make money on a delivery, the first time you crash your drone into a schoolyard or a school bus and children die, that's it, you're, you're done. And the insurance rates will be so high that it will prohibitively burden any other drone company, a drone delivery company. It's, it's not going to happen in, in the near future. It will happen eventually. Eventually we'll have drone delivery as seen in sci-fi, but it's not just around the corner. And what's happening, I think, is that a lot of the people who have invested in these drone delivery companies on the promise of all this massive return because the tube socks and pizzas and whatever will be delivered to your door in a matter of minutes, they're starting to realise it's not happening. It's not happening. And maybe we're better to put our money into things that are happening, like AI. AI is massive growth, and there is huge potential to make money out of AI because you can charge for AI services today. Your chat GPT has a paid tier. Most of the AI providers have a paid tier. They're already generating revenues, unlike drone delivery. So I think we're going to see the dominoes, <laughs> get the pun, pizza, the dominoes will tumble. And this is just the start of what will be a rapidly growing trend towards people pulling out of drone delivery. And that's good. That's good. I'm happy with that because drone delivery is one of the problems we as a hobby face. The people who are behind drone delivery, they just want to claim this airspace for their own use. And it's, I'm happy to share, but I'm not prepared to hand it over just because they want to make a buck out of it. A buck that they will not make for at least a decade. Right, what else is on my list of things? Um, oh yeah, did you see the footage of the drone chasing the Formula One car? Wasn't that brilliant? If you haven't seen it, where have you been? Get out from under that rock. Um, yeah, I think it was Max Verstappen, was it? I'm not sure, I can't remember the names. But uh, yeah, Formula One car being chased by a drone 300 and something kilometers an hour, astonishingly fast. And the, the Red Bull team helped these guys tune, fettle their little high-speed drone. And it was a great video, nicely produced. Red Bull's got more money than God, so they can just you know, throw any resources they wanted at a project like this, and they did. And the result was quite phenomenal, quite astounding. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, and hats off to the guys that built the drone and also the guys that made the video because it was good production. Um, yeah, fantastic. But my one takeaway, my one takeaway from that video is that, as I said, Red Bull has more money than God. They can throw whatever is necessary at something to make it work. And they could have chosen any FPV system on the face of the planet. It could have been DJI, could have been Walksnail, could have been HD0, but what did they use? They used analog. Yes, analog for the win. Now, I use all those FPV systems, but I find that half of my flying is still analog. Still analog, because it's so visceral. It's just something about analog that, as an old person who's got snowy eyes and SD vision, I just love it. It's brilliant. So they must have chosen it for some reason. It wouldn't have been financial, I don't think, because they could have afforded anything. So was it the low latency? Was it the, the reliable um, transition from full signal to no signal? We don't know. They didn't tell us. Maybe someone should do an interview with them and find out exactly why they... Maybe I'll do that. Find out. If you want me to do an interview, try and get hold of them and ask them why they made the choices, let me know and I'll see if I can do that. could be interesting. But yeah, great. I'll link it in the description. Most of the stuff I'm covering here, there'll be links in the description down there by my man parts. Go and click on those if you want more information. Next up, the AMA. Everybody loves the AMA. The American Medical Association, but the other AMA, not so much. Um, the, Academy, the Academy of Model Aeronautics, I don't know. But they've just come out crowing, you know, oh, ooh, look at us, look at us, we're so fantastic because we have negotiated a deal with the FAA that allows us, and at the moment seemingly only us, to issue temporary flares. Yes, the AMA has said that they've struck a deal with the FAA and they can issue temporary flares. If you want to have an event at a field or a school ground or anywhere, you just go to the AMA, they sanction the event, and it becomes a freer for the duration of that event, which is great. I mean, hey, why not? I mean, it becomes very hard to run ad hoc competitions or distributed competitions or, or put on displays for you know, groups if you can't designate the area as a freer. But there's some concerns on this. I mean, I, uh, it sounds great, but a couple of questions. First of all, part of the consent process is you must issue a NOTAM. Why? Do you know what a NOTAM is? A NOTAM is a, used to be called a notice to airmen, but you can't use men anymore. So it's a notice to somebody, anyone who flies an airplane. <laughs> I don't know what the nomenclature has been changed to. Um, should be a NOTAP now, notice to air person. But um, you have to issue a NOTAM at least 24 hours before and preferably seven days before. Why? Why? Why do airmen need to know that a little park has been designated as a freer? For a start, they shouldn't be flying low enough to care because model aircraft activities are still limited to 400 feet, unless you get special exemption, then you would need a NOTAM. But if it's just flying below 400 feet, airmen shouldn't need to know because they should be 500 foot and above, so it shouldn't be a concern. And secondly, 
Remote ID has no bearing on electronic conspicuity. People in an airplane, someone's flying an airplane, you know, an airplane driver, they're not going to be looking on their phone to see if there's any drones around. Remote ID is not designed to do that. It doesn't do that. It won't work in that situation. So the fact that there are going to be model aircraft flying without remote ID is of no consequence to anyone flying an aircraft. So why would you issue a NOTAM? It makes no sense. Again, it's people behind desks and suits and glass towers completely out of touch with reality. If they can come up, if they can explain to me why, then please, from the FAA, go down to the comedy bit there. You're allowed. I won't stop you. Tell us why you have to have a NOTAM. I don't understand. And the second thing is that this, at the moment, as far as I can see, is limited to the AMA. Now, they're a CBO, but you've got Flight Test, you've got uh, FPV Freedom Coalition. Do they have the same privilege? Are they allowed to uh, create temporary freers? I haven't seen any statements from them, and the AMA uh, statement didn't acknowledge these, that this was a, a privilege given to any other CBOs. So if not, why not? Why can't other CBOs have this privilege? If they're not allowed it, well, are they not trusted? Does the FA think that, oh, no, we can't trust them to have a, the right to issue a, a temporary freer? No, 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 why not? <laughs> Is a C, are all CBOs equal or are they not? Obviously, at this stage, it looks like they're not. And I don't think that's particularly fair. Either you qualify as a CBO or you don't. And it shouldn't be a tiered approach. Now, finally, well not finally, I've got one more after this, but I see that there's a congressman or a senator, I don't know how the US legal system, political, political system works, but in America there's this politician guy who wants to ban all DJI drones in America. He wants to pass a, a bill that will make it illegal to fly a DJI drone. This isn't, isn't just for government departments and federally funded organizations, this is for everybody, including you. If you've got a DJI drone, it would be illegal for you to fly it if this bill passed through. And the way they intend to implement, or he intends to implement this, is that if he gets his way, then the FCC approval for all DJI equipment would be withdrawn. And that means you can't legally use it without risking penalties under the, from the, you know, being prosecuted by the FCC. And, and they're actually even harsher with more stingy penalties than the FAA. And if you breach FCC regulations, you can end up in a whole lot of trouble. And because every drone has to have a Trump kind of transmitted to broadcast the video back and it has to have a controller, removing the FCC approval for the, for the equipment means you can't use it without breaking the law. And a lot of people have said that oh, there's very little chance of this actually going through and becoming law. But other people have said this guy, the guy proposing it is well respected and he's got some support. So there is still some kind of risk that this could happen. And if it does, all your DJI gear becomes completely worthless and there's nothing you can really replace it with. Maybe Autel, if they're still selling stuff, but like US made stuff, Skydio, no, they don't make recreational stuff anymore. It's all commercial and military now. They're gone where the big money is. So there could be a massive decrease in drone use overnight if this, if this bill gets passed into effect. So keep an eye out for that. And the reason for that, the reason they want to pass this is because the, this the paranoia is rampant within the halls of the US political uh, arena. Um, the American politicians believe that China, DJI are spying on them. Now I don't know. I, I, I'm not privy to what goes on in China or what DJI are doing. Um, DJI have repeatedly said no, 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 it's not true. It's not. Honestly, we don't. Um, and other people like um, Kevin has said yes, I've got the evidence, I've got the proof. So we don't know who to believe. I don't know who to believe. But um, whether it's true or not, um, I think the USA has a much bigger problem. And it, I read a story today which means they're finally twigging to this. They're finally working it out. I mentioned this years ago. Well, not years ago. Probably a year ago I mentioned this bigger threat. And finally they're waking up to it. And that is electric vehicles. The USA is about to be engulfed in a wave of cheap EVs from China. BYD and other companies in China are making some really good electric vehicles at really good prices and good performance. They seem to be pretty damn smick. And they're, going, they're already shipping them to the USA. So don't worry about little drones flying around school grounds and at the beach and so forth. They're not going to be betraying your secrets. It is the electric vehicles traveling every highway, every street, every back street of the USA. These EVs with multiple cameras on them and they have over the air updates so they're full time connected to the internet. That's your bigger security threat surely because they're everywhere and they're always connected. Your drone when it's turned off and stuffed in a closet, it's not talking to anybody. But your EV, even when it's parked in your garage at night, it's sniffing your Wi-Fi. It's, it knows what's going on. Yeah, so maybe we'll see a ban on Chinese electric vehicles, which will really screw up the, uh, the Chinese plan to you know, become a dominant player in that market. It's a wonderful world we live in, isn't it? It's really crazy. Now, finally, finally, um, Ukraine. 
Uh, yeah, most people groan when they talk about Ukraine. Oh, yeah, because Joe Average Public says, oh, these drones are dangerous. Look in Ukraine. They're killing people. They're blowing tanks up, blah, blah, blah. And uh, we all know that it's not the drones. It's the munitions they're attaching to them. So drones themselves are completely harmless. But you've got to stop people from attaching explosives. And that's not the issue here, though. What it is is our hobby is small. It's a niche hobby. It's a tiny, tiny hobby. It's probably even smaller than that. You know, it's probably about the size of my man parts. It's a very small hobby on the greatest scale of things. You know, fishing is huge. Um, motocross is huge. Drag racing is huge. Golf is huge. FPV is tiny, absolutely infinitesimal. Think of a cold winter's day with short pants on. That's how small drone FPV is. So it's quite worrying to see that just about every major um, military organization in the world, every country is now saying, we need FPV drones. Ukraine, for example. This year alone, they've already built 200,000 FPV drones. 200, that's more than you would sell to the hobby in a year. And they built it that in the first two months. Their plan is to build a million FPV drones this year and two million drones in total. And then we've got other countries, like the UK has acknowledged the importance of FPV drones, the USA, every other Western power, and probably a lot of Eastern powers, have said, we need, look, look what these drones are doing in Ukraine. We need these FPV drones. Get some FPV drones. So everybody is buying up all the bits, building FPV drones for their military. We're last in the queue. We're going to be last in the queue. And suddenly the demand has gone from this much to this much. Um, who's going to be filling the demand. Who's going to be meeting that demand? I don't know. It's going to be interesting. We may find some fairly significant shortages uh, as we move further into the year because the military are going to be buying the stuff in bulk and the hobby will be last in line. And so what you've got now, hang on to it. You might need it. Um, it's a worry. It's a big worry. But it probably, in theory, it means the parts will get cheaper. Economies of scale. But I wouldn't bank on it because I think that demand will exceed supply. And when you have demand that exceeds supply, prices go up, not down. See what happens. Anyway, that's the drone news for another week or so, roughly. Um, if you've got comments, questions, anything like that, go down there and leave, it, leave your comment, ask your question. I'll do my best to address any issues that are raised. And my goodness, 17 minutes. This was supposed to be a short video. I don't know. I, I can never manage short videos. But thank you for watching. Stay tuned. Lots of stuff coming up. The FPV safety pack, not the FPV, the RC safety pack will be uh, coming online. My server, my new server's down here and it's all plugged in and the, the things are spinning around, the fans are going, it's fantastic. I've just got to put software on it, connect it up to the fiber and I will be serving up all sorts of goodness files for projects like the FPV, oh, sorry, the um, ADSB alarm and other stuff. So stay tuned for that. Watch RC model reviews, that'll be coming up on there. Anyway, gotta go. Neighbors start up the lawnmower. <sighs> Bye for now, guys. Well, surely we don't have to obey all the regulations all the time, sir. You know my views about some regulations. They're written for the obedience of fools and the guidance of wise men.